So the next question is, Scott, what are your best suggestions for anxiety and weight loss? So what are my best suggestions? So what are your best suggestions? So I assume you're talking about like hypnotic suggestions for anxiety and weight loss. Um, so what would they be? This uh, again, it sort of opens up like a real big can of worms. Suggestions. Suggestions would imply that the way that you're sort of viewing hypnosis is like you put a client into trance and you tell them stuff like, you are never going to be anxious again, or you're always going to lose weight consistently and stuff like that. So those very straightforward suggestions don't work because the mind doesn't work like that. When you're telling a, uh, I'll give you this example. A client creates a problem by going into trance, rethinking that problem all the time and making what's called like a conscious and unconscious thought loop that becomes very robust and it's very hard for them to work on the problem. Uh, to fix the problem. So every time they think about the scenario that the problem is being created from, they get sucked into that thought loop and it goes around and around, just as an example. So if we go into the session thinking that we have a suggestion that will totally change a client's life, number one, you could be still talking about the symptom with your client, which means not going to have any sort of results. And number two, now you're telling the client how you want them to change. We've got to realize this. A client's mind unconsciously has a lifetime of experience and a lifetime of creativity and easy access to destroy that problem. But now if you go in telling the client's unconscious mind as if like it doesn't know anything and telling it your client how to change, if the suggestion you give them is not the best thing for them and the unconscious mind does accept it, you are now either going to create another problem for your client or you're going to give them a result that's very subpar. There is no way in the world as a hypnotherapist, I would ever know what suggestion to give my clients, whether they had anxiety, stop smoking, weight loss, or anything like that. How could I know? Because now I'm guessing. And now I'm coming from a point of thinking, I know more than my client's mind. So transverse to this, the way that I viewed it and the way that I essentially did it was, I got my client, I talk about my client's problem, find the parameters, find the closest I could the root cause, get them into trance, and then I allowed them to heal themselves. I use instead of suggestions, I use things like process instructions. So process instructions aren't suggestions. They're open-ended suggestions of what they should do, but they're not limited to only one way to do things. Okay. And Erickson, Milton Erickson was very, um, was sort of famous for these process instructions. And I won't go into what they could be and stuff like that because it's all context dependent. But I realized one thing very quickly about techniques and suggestions and trance and all that sort of stuff. If you look at any technique that's ever been taught, the timelines, the regression, the confusion language, the Ericksonian, the NLP hypnosis, traditional clinical, look at everything across the board, no matter how many times those strategies have been taught with a new fancy name, they all seem to be the same thing anyway. What's the one thing that exists amongst all techniques, all suggestions in order to have a positive result? And the one thing is trance. So when I realized that, my only goal was to get my clients in this trance, into trance as quickly as possible and infer for them to solve their own problem. Now, I know a lot of people live by that presupposition. We all say, you know, we know a client can solve their own problem. But as soon as you start telling a client how to solve their problem, now you're going into fix it mode. You're going into, I know more than you, fix it this way. I'm going to tell you to do this. And that's something you definitely want to avoid. So... Suggestion-wise, I don't have the best ones because I didn't use them and I don't see them being necessary. Suggestion-wise, again, if you're giving your client suggestions, now you're telling your client how you want them to solve their problem and how could you know? You're consciously trying to give them a suggestion based on how little to know that your conscious mind understands things while their unconscious mind has basically produced this person sitting in front of you. They're going to have a lifetime of resources and they're going to fix their problems in more ways than you could ever imagine. I'll give you an example of this and I'll leave this video below. Um, we did the past advanced conversation in my therapy program. I was talking about this very subject. It's a very key lesson. And we did a demo with uh, a lady by the name of Tracy. Um, and she had problems with breathing from, um, you know, the affliction of having COVID like coronavirus. Her lungs were shot. She had all this anxiety. She wasn't eating properly. There's a myriad of different problems, core problems, root cause problems, all that sort of stuff. Now I could have gone into trance, got her into trance and said things like, you can breathe easy, you can do this, you can do that, but now I'm telling her what to do. And you'll see me in this breakdown, I talk about this. The way she solved her own problem was by hallucinating butterflies, literally hallucinating butterflies. She said, I can feel butterflies in my chest. 
That was it. That was the therapy. I had no idea she was going to talk about that. I could never prepare that. I mean, how could you even prepare that in like a script or something like that or a technique? There's no butterfly technique. I'm sure there's no script. I'm sure someone will write one once they watch this. There's no script for like butterflies floating around in your chest, but that's what she did. And you'll see her completely heal herself by hallucinating, not imagining, hallucinating, physically feeling butterflies in her chest. No idea what that means, but it gave her a massive breakthrough and her breathing was completely healed. Like the, the issues with the coronavirus and all this, completely healed. And you hear her say that in the thing. So it really proves the point about suggestions to get away from the old traditional stuff where you quote unquote, put your client into trance, like open up their mind and then spew onto them all these positive suggestions. It doesn't work like that. You never want to go into fix it mode. The more time you're trying to fix your client's problem by doing things the way that you want them to heal, you are now limiting your client's ability to heal themselves. And all you're doing is guessing. So if you ever find your client's problems are not being resolved or you need multiple sessions or the client's problem is coming back over and over, it's probably because you're trying to lead the conversation one way. You're trying to lead the therapy one way based on the way that you do things. And that is a very messy place to be in. And it becomes so limiting for you as a therapist, when you're trying to perform and get things done with your clients, but like healing their problem, that's a ton of pressure on yourself. So again, if you're finding yourself anxious before the sessions, I used to find myself here as well, or trying to figure out what to do or getting your preparations and your scripts together and your audio skills, that sort of stuff. When you're doing all of that stuff, you've now fallen into the category of I'm trying to fix my client. And that's where the pressure comes on. We can't, we can't be a good therapist when there's a lot of pressure. But the funny thing is you could spend, I don't know, a couple of hours preparing all this stuff. Then you talk to your client and you realize, oh my God, that's not even the problem, the real problem, because you've prepared everything based on the symptom. And then all of a sudden your client comes out with quote unquote, the root cause, but you've got everything prepared for the symptom. So what do you, what do you do? You're sort of, again, in a rock and a hard place. Um, so suggestion wise, forget about them. Let a client come up with their own suggestions, their own reality, their own trance, their own therapy. And it saves you so much headache to try and prepare everything, put it together. And again, this is really, it's sort of the opposite way the more traditional therapies and coaching sort of teach us, but this is how healing begins. Clients will heal themselves. And you can't just say that you've got to live by that rule. You can't violate that rule by giving suggestions and techniques because now you're in fix-it mode. So suggestions, whether you're working with anxiety, stop smoking, weight loss, they're irrelevant. Allow your clients to get to a place where they can heal themselves. That would be my best suggestion for, for your problem.